What's going on? How's everyone doing? Right, so today I'm going to take you lot through my travel film gear and I'm also going to tell you why I personally think that this setup here is the ultimate travel film gear. Let's go through it then. Just to give you some context as to why I'm doing this today, I'm going to Vietnam for two weeks on a motorbike, traveling about a thousand miles, and this here is gonna be my exact camera setup. And it's all gonna go into my F-stop Telopa bag. I'm gonna stick all of this in here and show you how it goes in and why I set it up in a particular way. So let's crack on. Right, so obviously we've got the F-stop Telopa here. And on the inside, I've set up the internal camera unit in a specific way for this specific camera equipment. So this camera here, this is only the 550D, but I'm gonna pretend it's the A7S because I'm currently filming on the A7S right now. So let me quickly just make a note of that. Right, so that you lot know, this is actually the A7S. It's not the 550D. So. A7S and the Canon 10 to 18 mil is gonna slip straight in this very front pocket. I like to keep it there because it's right at the lower part of the bag and it's probably the most comfy and protected place where it can sit. You can see there's loads of extra room in here. So what I do is put my RAV power battery pack for the A7 camera with two batteries in it as well. That slips on in there. Then I've got the Canon 50mm 1.8, just chilling, that really, really cheap one. Decent, decent lens. Not the best build quality, but end of the day, I'm so run and gun, there really is no point me taking a really, really nice expensive lens. That slips on in there. So that's that section done. Next up, we've got the DJI Mavic Pro. Now, I know all of you know about the DJI Mavic. In 2017, it is kind of essential to have aerials and I love this thing. I don't think I could travel with another drone with this compact of a setup. So yeah, this is probably the only one I would be taking on a trip like this. So I actually stick the Mavic in this compartment here. I stick two of the Mavic batteries in the bottom there. They sit like that at the bottom of that compartment. And then the Mavic just pops so you've got to be careful of the props. Pops on top, and there you go, the Mavic's in there and it's nice and secure. We've got the Mavic controller here, and obviously you want to be quite careful because you don't want to be breaking any of your knobs or anything like that. This just slips in here, and I'll do it horizontally so there's actually room for the controls to move about in there. ND filters. I've currently got an ND on the Mavic right now because I think I'm going to need it most of the time, so I'll just leave it on there anyway. And I'll slip that in there. We've got the Mavic props with the controller, just in case, you know, I have a little cheeky accidental crash. So next up, I'm gonna pack the Mavic controller. Now the controller is gonna go right at the bottom of this compartment here. Intervalometer, this is obviously for time lapses. I've got a cleaning kit, a blower, no homo. I've got the lens cleaning pen here, brush at the other end, great. Microfiber towel, alcohol swabs in there. Zoom H1, and the reason I'm gonna be taking this instead of the Rode Video Mic Pro is the fact that the Rode Video Mic Pro is more of a shotgun mic, and I want something that's a bit more of a kind of general mic that is gonna pick up sounds from all around me instead of the ones that are directly in front, because you want it to kind of be an immersive experience. If you're traveling, you wanna kind of get the sounds from all around, not just directly in front the Mac charger so that slips on in here as well I've got the last three a7s batteries here I number them all so I know which ones have actually dead and which ones are still clean these ones are just gonna slip in the side next to my cleaning kit because then they're kind of quite accessible and you kind of want to make your travel bag as accessible as possible to the things that you're gonna need on the go really quick next up I'm just gonna take some general sharpie pens here I've got as you can see a thick tip and a really thin ball tip. You can never be caught out without a pen. They are gonna slip in on the other side of the cleaning kit. Some general cables. I've got some micro USB cables. I'll probably take two or three of these, to be honest. Then I've got my little 3.5 jack to jack for my Zoom H1 if I wanna plug it directly into the A7S. They're just gonna be 
plonked in there. Multi-tool, so I've got a ton of knives, some screwdrivers and some general tools that you just need when you're traveling anyway. So I'll keep that in there. So I've got some Allen keys here. So I always keep them in my kit because you never know when you're gonna need them. That just slips in there with the rest of that. USB to AC adapter, definitely get one with two on. So now as you can see this compartment here is pretty full and things are actually prone to fall out of it. So what I'm going to do, this is just one of the pads that come with the bag. That is literally just going to stick on the inside there and it's going to cover that part there. Because I know that 90% of the stuff that I've got in here isn't really going to be needed until we get to a hostel or a hotel. I'm not going to need them out and about while we're traveling on the motorbikes and things like that. So I just like to keep them completely shut away. So then when we do get to a hotel, I can just whip them out as and when I need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zip this back compartment up for the time being. And we're going to enter through the top of the bag. Exciting times. Right, so as you can see, I've obviously got my ICU, which is the internal camera unit here. Then, next, obviously you need a laptop to do some editing on and to transfer footage, so straight in there, plonk. Next up, the Zine Crane. Now this is easily the most awkward thing to fit in the bag. I have to unscrew the bottom part. What I do is, here I've attached a bungee cord to these two clips on the ICU and all I do slip it under there I loosen up these so it's allowed to kind of freely move and there we go look there's the crane actually just strapped onto that there so that is nice and solid the actual pistol grip in this zip here sweet the Joby Gorilla Pod Zoom on top of the crane, the Diker pack, which is my underwater housing for my A7S Mark II. If you're wondering what's on the inside, I've got like a list of different configurations and how to set it up for that configuration. That literally just sits in there on top. Nice, and there is still quite a lot of room in there if I'm completely honest with you. So now we're gonna go back to the main compartment. So let's go in here. And as you can see, I've still got a ton of room in here, like loads of room. This compartment here is probably the most secure compartment on the entire bag. So what I put in here is things like business cards, SD cards, passport, my international driver's permit, and then obviously some cash. Now, we've still got these three compartments and I'm gonna fill them up with my clothes for the two weeks. So I like to roll mine up usually gets me a decent amount of space. See, look, that has an e that's taken up about a third of that one compartment. That's one T-shirt. Obviously, the one I've got on and the two that are in the bag, and then every three days, I wash the whole lot. There we go, two T-shirts in there. One really naughty pair of shorts. Don't really take up any room at all within the bag. And then I've got extra room for undies, socks, glasses, hat, things like that. They can all just slip in there happy days i've got a complete kit and i bet you're thinking hold on james you haven't put the gopro or this camera here in the bag well the reason for that is when i'm traveling along i like to have little cameras like a gopro and the rx100 which obviously isn't an rx100 because the camera you're watching this on now is the rx100 so let's just pretend this is for now this is going to stay in my pocket along with the gopro so i've always got a nice camera on hand whenever an occurrence appears i definitely have got a camera to whip out and capture that particular moment so when you think about it i've got a crane an a7s i've got a decent drone in here what more could you possibly ask for in a travel kit like this i've also got these side compartments so i usually stick anything else that i need in these compartments and also remember there's still this compartment at the top anything else that i've got like toiletries toothbrush goes in this very top compartment right so there we go and i bet you wasn't thinking i was going to fit all of that in this bag and still have extra room this is 50 liters this bag so it's quite a hefty bag but i can still get on with this for carry on sometimes and that is literally my entire travel equipment in there as well as all of my clothes for two weeks. Right, so let me take you on the trip that we are going on. If you have a look here, this is the entire route that we took last time we went to Vietnam on the motorbike trip. This was about 3,000 miles and we've only got two weeks. We've done this in two months. 
So we're definitely not gonna be able to do 3,000 miles in two weeks. So we've come up with a nice little 1,000 mile trip that we're gonna do. So what we're doing is flying into Ho Chi Minh City. Once we get to Ho Chi Minh City, the next morning we've gotta wake up, buy ourselves two motorbikes. First day we're gonna ride down to this place here called Vung Tao. That's gonna take us probably about six hour ride. Then the following day, we're gonna ride all the way up here to a place called Mu Nei. Now Mu Nei has really, really nice beaches, sand dunes. We're gonna go and rent a quad bike and quad bike the hell out of these sand dunes. After Mu Nei, we're gonna ride up here, which is a route we didn't do before, from Mu Nei up to a place called Dalat. Now Dalat is a beautiful city in the jungle kind of scenery. It's got loads of waterfalls, loads of activities to do. After Dalat, we're gonna do this road here, the road from Dalat to Nha Trang. Now this is about a four hour drive and it is in my opinion, the nicest ride that you can possibly do the entire route of Vietnam. The roads up here were incredible, but this one here, was probably my favorite route of the entire country that we done last time. By the time we get here, we're about six days in. So we're gonna ride from Nha Trang round here to a place on this peninsula called Jungle Beach. Now we're gonna spend about four to five days at Jungle Beach. I really, really just wanna chill out, spend a couple of days there and just relax. Maybe make a few edits for you lot, make it nice and fun. After that, we're gonna ride all the way back from Jungle Beach back to Dalat. Then we're gonna sell our motorbikes in the lap, fly back to Ho Chi Minh City, fly back to London. So yeah, that is our motorbike trip that we're gonna be doing. I hope you enjoyed me going through all my camera equipment for this travel trip. Hopefully give you a bit of inspiration to develop your travel gear and anything that I've spoke about today, I'll link in the description so you can check it out. So next time I'll be seeing you lot will be in Vietnam. This is gonna be the last one I'm gonna post before I go on this trip. You lot have a wicked time. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I will see you later. Sweet.